All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to game number two. It's LGD International versus Vici Gaming. Just a heads up, we may have to restart the stream after the draft because Lumi is actually not in Dota TV uh, or in the lobby. So if we have to, we'll restart the stream with zero delay and cast via Dota TV. But hopefully they'll remake for us as we had some issues loading the first lobby and Lumi's Dota kind of messed up. Unfortunately, I guess we've been in a rush today. But anyway, LGD International versus Vici Gaming. This one, a best of three. Winner will advance to phase three where the likes, well, basically the big dogs, the likes of Orange Esports, LGD International, DK, as well as Invictus Gaming are all awaiting them. We already saw Rising Stars and the Chain Stack move forward yesterday. Uh, or Rattles, Rattlesnakes and Chain Stack. Man, too many RSs in this tournament. Uh, move forward yesterday. Right now, it looks like LGDN are primed to do it themselves. And then our final match coming up, we'll see. It'll be either Zenith or Neelish in Thailand. But before we get there, we've got a draft to get through. So the first thing that's the most important thing I noticed so far is that Shadow Fiend's being banned out by LG Gaming. And that's Vichy Gaming's go-to hero that they snowball completely out of control. That's how Vichy Gaming wins most of their games with CYT. Well, kind of getting that uh, Mask of Madness, Shadow Blade, Crits, Shadow Fiend. It's not going to be available this game. And they do have some decent snowball hero from the Queen of Pain, but... In the past, I don't think Queen of Pain has really single-handedly dominated games remain. like Shadowfiend has before. Yeah, I mean, it's he said he has two favorite heroes, right? Anti-Mage and Shadowfiend. We see them both banned on the second stage, so... What is ZTY going to play? That's sort of the big question. I think we've seen him play heroes like Luna occasionally in the past, but... Lifestealer, Luna, Lone Druid, but it's just kind of a different hero. It doesn't have similar successes as Anti-Mage and Shadowfiend. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see what that last pick is, but... They're forcing him out of his comfort zone, and the big thing is LGD didn't get some classic heroes for their style. Lone Druid Lashrak, fantastic combo for knocking down towers, breaking the base early, and also on top of that, you have a Shadow Demon, so you have that setup stun for Lashrak. And well, oh boy, we're going Kotal PL. We could be in enough for a long one, so hopefully we could get a remake, and uh, I'll be in the game myself, but Gyrocopter is going to be the pick here for Lashrak. It could be a decent answer against those Phantom Lancer or Illusions. I know LG has been liking to play as a support, but this game looks like it's going to be one of those farming Gyrocopters, which again, uh, kind of making a small resurgence into the, or not resurgence, kind of a small step into the Chinese scene. Most Chinese teams think Gyrocopter is a trash hero, thinking that's too weak, it doesn't do enough damage. Well, we watch enough European and Dota to know that he is one of the best late game carries. And, Let's see if LG Gaming can convince the other Chinese teams. Yeah, and it's funny because LG Dent were actually, the, I believe they were interviewed and Misery said they, they felt the hero wasn't that really that strong in Chinese Dota. So that was what LG Dent said about the hero. Now we see them picking it. Maybe it was some mind games going on. Anyway, we're going to find out if we can have a quick remake. If not, we will be restarting the stream, I think, and casting via Dota, via Dota TV. If not, uh, we'll hop over to Dota TV. So anyway, while we wait to find out, let's introduce the players. We have Brax handling the gyrocopter. We are going to have G playing the puck. And very nicely, they will let us have a quick remake. So guys, stay tuned. When we come back, we'll have the line game underway. We'll introduce the players properly then. May it be an evening star shines down upon you. May it be when darkness falls, your heart will be
muted. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to an AP remake of a CM game. You are watching the G League Season 1 of... Uh, or G, G1 League Season 5. What the hell am I talking about? Holy crap. So many technical issues today, but that's right. We're back with more G1 League action. It's Vici Gaming versus LGD International. I'm LD. I'm joined by Luminous, and we are casting game number two of this best of three. The winner of the series will move on to phase three of the G1 League. The loser will go home. It's single elimination from here on out until we get to round three. And right now, LGD International looking like the team that actually showed up ready to play and ready to take the win as they are currently leading the series one to zero and just crushed their way through that game one but lumi on the side of each game we have the power of phantom lancer keeper of the light and we also have the power of the game not loading and i think you are the culprit my friend no uh, don't blame me are you in the game i'm not seeing you i'm in dota 2. it's set it's painting you now so it looks like you're just loading don't Oh, the there, shows up there late. you go. The hero you got shows it. Up late, but on time. I think you might be too late, actually. Nope. All right, here we yeah, go. All right. What a focused start to the cast. So, Luby, anyway, it's the G1 League. It's LGD International versus Vici Gaming, and it's a best of three. Vici Gaming, they've got Kotal PL, but LGD has a really strong, aggressive lineup that I think can actually win this tri lane. Gyrocopter, Shadow Demon, Lashrak. It's going to be tough always against Keeper of the Light, but. If any lineup could do it, it's a lineup like this one. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, Koto PL is always very, very scary, but only if it's like 40, 45 minutes in the game. Now, obviously, they're a great early game laning hero as well, especially in conjunction with that Rubik. But Flat Cannon, or Gyrocopter is one of the best trialing hero period because of Flat Cannon as well as his uh, Rocket Barrage. And you have the perfect setup. Also, the cool thing about this trialing with the Shadow Demon Lashrak is that you could leave Gyrocopter alone. He could handle the lane mostly fine if he has the boot to speed. And your two supports could roam off and gank that mid lane. And it doesn't matter if you're ganking Queen of Pain, who's normally a very tough kill to get. You have the disruption set up, and generally with the pocket disruption uh, silence, you, you're going to get the kill. On the side of LGD International, we are going to have Brax handling the Gyrocopter. 1437 on the Shadow Demon. We will have Misery on the Lashrak. He actually played that four position H's Prophet last game. Worked out beautifully. God kill them all. Some big plays from his Queen of Pain. We'll see him now this time on the Puck. Not saving for that bottle, though. Getting a lot of extra early stats and regen. And then PyCat going to be playing one of his signature heroes, that safe lane Lone Druid. And then over on the side of Ichi Gaming, well, what are they going to be facing up against? They're facing up against, a, well, first of all, a big smoke usage on the bot. And let's see if they can pick off any hero. We do have Finroy going to be playing the Keeper of Light, FY, on that Rubik, which, by the way, one of his best and signature heroes. We do have CTY playing the Phantom Lancer. Looks like they're going to run into Finroy. A very, very good way that he ran in. Just poke out the trees, dispel the smoke. They know something's up, but no kills going against them. So that's pretty good. Back in the mid lane here, it's going to be San Diego on that Queen of Pain. One of his more comfortable heroes as well. And last but not least, XTT on the top lane here playing the clockwork. This trialing is going to be very, very tough for LGD. And let's see if they're going to look towards to actually picking up a couple of early kills. They have to easily the power to get those kills if the Radiant Heroes is out of position, but I don't think they will be out of position. I am being told that Casper is in our channel. I'm not sure if that's true. I actually have no way to check. I do not know why Casper is in this channel, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, Casper. And Lumi, apparently you're in the wrong channel as well. Well, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I know, I know that, uh, I know you joined channel two. I was in channel three because I saw the Russians were in channel two. Oh man, what a total mess. What a total mess. All right, for those of you who want our audio, you have to turn the stream volume on. You're going to have to mute the in game. What a disastrous day. I have no idea. I'm actually the lead broadcaster slot in this channel, I'm pretty sure. So everyone's going to see my, my camera in the Russian stream. Oh, boy. Well, I'm going to mute my microphone at least so those who want to hear the Russians can. So if you want me in game, it's going to make more sense for you just to listen to the stream. As otherwise, I'm just going to be fighting with the Russians to be heard. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So and I guess I'll mute myself in uh, channel number three. So actually, it was it would have been so interesting for anybody that just tuned in to watch a replay later and they turn on, let's say, to a Russian stream and they're like, what the fuck is doing, Lumi doing here? And then same thing likewise with the other stream. But a little bit of dewarding action in the uh, jungle. As, again, LGN gotta make sure they get some early kill because 
Try leaning against a Keeper of Light is almost impossible, especially when you allow him to hit that level 2, that Lumine spam, you're, you're dead. Uh, but right now, very, very, this ward on the far left does block the camp, and look at how confused Vichy Gaming is right now. Like, they are not sure. Well, they finally do realize by the process of elimination that is there, but they don't have Sentry to deward it, so they got him good. They got him good indeed, and the smoke pays off, at least in that sense. They have pushed the lane though, and the nice thing about running the keep of the light in the defense of tri lane, of course, or in any tri lane, is that you have the advantage when it comes to the pulls. If you're safely, you can just push the lane so that they can't actually contest it. And uh, well, if you're offensive tri lane, you can look to jack it with illuminate. So once they have money for sentries, they should be able to deward this and do some pulling. But the damage to some extent already done. The good news is LGDN isn't for rain into their jungle, isn't going for too many kills early. But obviously, Sony Vici game isn't going to be particularly happy about. It. You can see them continue to spam the lane. 1437 muscling up by himself. They're going to look to go here with. A disruption to start, a split earth to follow, and now the barrage coming out. Edict damage on top of it all. FY dropping quickly. YXY will go down, but actually, we will see the first blood going to Fenrir. The Keeper of the Light picks it up, saves the tri -lane. They get two. They want three. They don't have mana for more unless their Shocker Magic there is. Can give it to Phantom Lancer. It's going to be three kills, a wipe of the tri -lane. and this after LGD had got the initiation. I think they just forced the issue. 1437 was too far away from his team. They had to dive too far, and they let the Illuminates be spammed, and that really hurt them. Yeah, normally forcing the issue is good, but not after Fenrar getting a two or three man Illuminate on top. And now you can see Boots of Speed being picked up on these heroes. And of course, even Fenrar perks up that Magic Stick, which is probably the best item in a trialing situation. Because there's a ton of stuff being chucked out. They're going to try to go make a go on that PL. PL is going to get stunned. Black Cannon being used. Can they get the pill? PL? They are going to get it. He's got a double kill, but they're going to make him pay at least for now. It's this bot lane, a lot of action. It's a bloodbath in the tri lane, and actually gold jipping towards LGD, which makes me think they must be winning their solo lanes, and in fact they are. PyCat, 20 and 7. He's been like just completely consistent when he's playing that, that lone drew. Whether he goes mid, whether he goes safe lane, he's always crushing his lane. Not just winning it by a little bit, but crushing it. Something which might sound straightforward when it's a lone druid, but something we've actually seen a lot of other players struggle with uh, to just fully take advantage of the matchup. Mid lane, Puck winning. G, outlast to that Queen of Pain. So they're winning their two soul lanes, albeit mid is a lot more even, but that's going to be big for them as this tri lane, in spite of the counter kill there, they gave up first blood and they gave up three kills. So you have to say it's really not going their way, but winning the two solo lanes, that That'll make this overall a pretty decent game for them. But do you feel like they're winning it enough to kind of combat against the PL? I do, because uh, of top lane. I mean, look at PyCat's farm, 26 and 9. Fair enough. I mean, he, he is going to basically be farming. The one thing about Lone Druid is that he doesn't contribute too much until he gets, whether it's a Radiance or Maelstrom. So it's going to be a while until PyCat's uh, goal come to fruition in that sense. Clockwork obviously is going to be so helpful to his team, especially once he picks up the level 6. He does have the mono regen from the bottle, which he will be bottle curling as well. Looks like here they're going to go around 1437. Disruption already used. Can you get that lift? They do. They will toss him back. Is there enough mana from Vrindwar? He's going to be match wanting up. Not even necessary because the second spare lands. Man, one of the powerful thing about spare lands is 7 second cooldown. You could chuck Oh, G. G looks to be dead mid lane. He's going to get shadow struck. There's going to be a blink at a scream in a matter of seconds. He does have one phase shift. Maybe can turn this around. There's your blink. Ooh. The scream is there. A second too early on the phase. I think he might have died to an auto attack. That was really close though. SYDM gets the solo kill. And now, well, now Lumi, I'm not feeling so good about the situation for LGDN. Yeah, it's 5-2 to two suddenly here in the favor of the Radiant. The Gold Chart is going crazy right now, but Queen of Pain hitting that quick level 6. And let's see if it's going to... Well, I think he's going to be bottle curling and perhaps deliver herself a TP squirrel as well. That's got to be very discouraging if you're LG in, because you can't even make those dive anymore on the bot lane if you notice that Queen of Pain has a TP and has full mana to go. And CTY getting some farm in the bottom lane, and he's really not CSE that well. That's the sort of the one issue right now. He's only 9 and 2. Is he either getting kills in this tri lane? He's 2 1 and 2. But it's not like he's getting a lot of CS. So, in spite of his powerful start with kills, he's basically even with Gyrocopter. Now, the nice thing, though, is as the, he sees these heroes level up, the tri lane only gets harder for LGDN. They run out of regen. They have to worry about the Illuminate spam. You can always spam more Illuminates. You can't always buy more salves and if you do then you're delaying the other crucial items your teams need and now they're not gonna have an easy time placing new wards because up against the keeper of the light fenrir can always keep this lane pushed there will never be an easy opportunity to go and drop those wards so now challenging the pull gets a whole lot harder which is why i did feel like it was okay for vichy gaming that they had a bit of a slow start just being able to spam illuminate keep them back now we're going in mid that's why dm blinks in drops the scream the face ship was already used there is a dream call and a queen of pain ult. the queen of pain ult will hit g looking for the man up here he's got the orb suit he'll die again 
G, known for dominating his 1v1 matchups made most of the time, but getting dominated this game. Yeah, sometimes when you fall behind, you just have to go for those risky maneuvers, and this time it didn't pay off, and now he's even further behind. He, the only, of course, quote-unquote saving grace is that you do draw out that ultimate, but hey, he got a kill on top of that, so he doesn't really care. Here comes a Misery trying to set up something on the mid lane. Oh, San Diego, he's kind of low, but I don't think he's going to run into Misery. Well, I think Vici Gaming's a good position now, Lumi. I mean, the gold graph says it's even, but this is a game where LGDN has to be ahead. They really can't afford to go into the mid game on even footing and feel confident about winning. It's not that they can't win. It's just going to be very difficult to do it because, well, you're pushing into Keeper of the Light. You're pushing into Rocket Spam. You're pushing into Rubik's Fade Bolt. You're pushing against a lot of spam and against the lineup that could split push effectively on top of that. So LGDN, one thing they will have going their way is probably the Roshan advantage. There will be the rockets to scout that out. There will be the Illuminate to harass you, but they do have the Dire Side. They have the Lone Druid. So I think they'll have a chance of getting Roshan, but it's feeling to me like they're going to need something big like a Roche kill in order to kind of get the mid game back their way because they're not looking at an early tier one bottom, even top lane. Could be a dangerous situation as San Diego SYDM is smoked up. He's looking to go here. XTT has a hook. We're going to see a backstab from SYDM as... Oh, Pycat. Very careful. He gets the entangle here. SYDM about to break smoke. Cold Blake in. He drops the scream. He drops the shadow strike. The hook to fly as well. There is a TP. It comes from our Lashrac who could potentially turn this around. The one TP from Lashrac driving back the two solos. But maybe Misery's overextended. One more auto attack. That early... Early Null Talisman doing some serious work. And the Entangle! Oh. The root under the tower! Oh, the RNG! Just when he needs that Entangle, he gets it. Misery will live, and now G's come in. Vici Gaming, that's a powerful start for them. Down the drain, giving up their two solo heroes. That is a boatload of experience, and we see it on the graph. A direct downwards plummet in favor of their team. Queen of Pain gave up a pretty decent, highly level kill, and that's why you're talking about that ghost streak. But meanwhile, on the bot lane, though, it looks like the Vichy Gaming trialing was able to get a kill against 1437 on Shadow Demon, and doing a ton of tower to or this damage to this tower, and the tower last it's gonna go into CTY's hands. Brass can't do anything but back off against that one. So, so overall, big win for CTY or for Vichy Gaming and CTY, and he's gonna be starting to go back to his jungle and basically rice it up, and there's really not much LGDN could do about that at this point. You really can't gank him, not especially now with your Puck, somewhat under level compared to that Queen of Pain. And the, game, farm. the game is by no means decided, but Vichy Gaming had a, the kind of start where if you just play, if you play it safely and basically just slow roll your advantage, it's going to be almost, not impossible, but very hard for LGDN to come back here. bottom lane. Lance, lift, illuminate, there's a self disrupt, but I do believe CTY could turn around for Lance. If that's what you want, no, FY is gonna get a little bit behind, it's gonna eat a little bit of flat cannon, no follow up though. So OG Gaming not gonna take that kill either. The level advantage starting to become an issue here, uh, at least on the supports of the Radiant side. Keeper level five, CTY four, and once these two heroes get six or seven, they could start to look for a lot more aggression in terms of start rising up in the jungle or setting up those smoke inks. So Pycat has gone phase boots. It looks like he's going back Maelstrom. He wants to go for basically the item that will help you more when you're just grouping up and pushing quickly. The Radiant's much more of a split pushing late game farming item. So it looks like he is going to choose the items that will allow them to force the fights before VG Gaming get too big. We will see if he can get that quick assault caress out though. That's going to be the big question. And right now he's getting that good farm. They still have the tier one up top. The one thing is, they really probably need three. Oh, Queen of Pain, split Earth mid lane, get silence. SYDM on the run now, has the scream, he'll blink north. He can maybe even turn around, but the Dream Quo is deployed. XTT arrives with the, oh, with the hook. That's gonna hurt. And now Misery on the run. There's no battery assault in range right now. The split Earth misses. If that hits, XTT also dies. The TPN needed to land that hook, doesn't do so. Another death for a Queen of Pain that started off 2 0. The support's really pulling G back into this game. Man, Misery is just playing so well right now. His teleport support, landing those split earth, and obviously he's getting a little bit of uh, entangled luck here from, uh, especially on the top engagement from PyCat. For the most part, though, I mean, he missed one split earth show so far, but he's hit a lot more, and those ones he hit really turning the game back. Back on the bottom lane here, they want Brax. Illuminate's gonna fly in here, but G in Viz is gonna rescue his ally. I don't think he can, so he will back off. Maybe he's gonna try to snipe FY, but. We'll see. He definitely has enough nuking power to do so, especially if the supports are going to be a little bit further away from their allies. He doesn't have Dream Coil, though. This is going to be a little bit dangerous to go in where they don't have the Tier 1, so it looks like he'll just back off, and I think the wise choice in the end. Yeah, the two support both only have like 600-ish HP, but not with uh, the Spirit Lance around to kind of slow him down. Back in the mid lane here, Queen of Pain. 
still having a tough game uh, despite getting the first blood and, and the kill on, on Puck. But um, what, what do you think he's going to be going next in terms of item choices? Well, we'll talk oh, about no. that later as disruption opening. There's a slurf. Silence is going to be on top. And well, looks like he's not going to be going for any items because he's losing a ton of gold from these. I games. think he's going back to Fountain Lumi. That's what I yeah. think he's going for right now is back to the base because he just took a fall. And mid lane, the Edict's going out. Level 4 Edict from Lashrak. Something you often don't see. Uh, in that tri lane, when you're up against a hero like Phantom Lancer, just because you want the and, and a keeper of light, you really want the nuke just to mow down the creep wave. But he's gotten away with going edict, and now they can really pressure towers. So something that you don't normally see, but if you can get away with it, is really going to help them knock you down some towers. They forced out a glyph, they forced a big rotation. Now Phantom Lancer is a bit on an island bottom. We will see C2I pick up his tranquil boots, Rinna Basilius, as well as drums. I imagine we'll just see the Diffusal Blade now. Maybe could look towards the Reign of Aquila, but you really want to start getting that Diffusal Blade because Queen of Pain's being shut down. Clockworks died repeatedly. They are going to need CTY to shoulder a heavy bird in this game if they want to stay in it. Yeah, so a lot of the uh, European viewers, if they're so awake, or American viewers that are so awake, thinking about PL and what he does in a late game situation, well, I mean, he's a very, very powerful hero late game. Obviously, we don't need to t talk too much about that. The thing is that the Chinese play him a lot more as kind of a, a split pusher. He's going to AFK farming in the jungle, AFK farming in lane, but if a fight ever breaks out, he's going to either teleport in or get recalled in, and it's going to add a ton of nuking damage to his allies. So do look towards CTY to actually be a very active part of his ally, uh, of his team. And Vichy Gaming would not basically play 5v4. And that's going to be somewhat more difficult for LG Gaming if they start to want to slow see some of these towers. LGD, well, our Gyrocopter is a big AoE hero. Aside from him, they don't really have much true AoE. Split Earth a little bit. They're going in bottom on CTY. He gets purged. Do they have the dust? That's the question. No, Sentry Ward. Deployed now. And then the cooldown to follow. They're going to burst him down. The movement for these supports has been very solid. But you really have to question CTY sitting in the lane that far up. I mean, it doesn't even matter if he has wards, because those heroes were off the map. You really have to play more cautiously against LGDN. And, well, that questionable decision-making. We saw it in Game 1, too. Vici Gaming just getting picked off. I feel like they played even more sloppy recently than what we've seen from them at points of the past. I mean, earlier in this tournament or even in tournaments past, I feel like they're just not playing with top form right now. And I still think they could easily take this game just because of their composition, but... They can't keep on making mistakes, especially of all heroes. CTY is the one who really can't afford to die. Yeah, I put that one on, on a big miscommunication uh, for Vichy Gaming. I think if you're going to play so deep right in front of a tier 2 when there's heroes missing off the map, your allies have to be putting a ton of pressure either on the enemy towers or on the enemy heroes by doing smoke ganks of your own. None of that happened. And of course, well, if the enemy team isn't pressuring your towers and you see Phantom Lancer right in front of the base, might as well set up the gank, and that was, you know, like you said, miscommunication got picked off, and they're looking like, you know, again, hero composition, they're definitely favor, but kills like those are what LGDN needs to come back. Yeah, I mean, so to go back to the conversation that I was trying to start earlier, is LGDN, they don't actually have that much AoE, with Lashrak maxing, maxing Split Earth first, Edict will not help you against Delusions, Puck has some decent spam, Shadow Poison's not bad, but later on it's not really something you can count on versus Phantom Lancer Illusions. Especially when you're trying to break the base and there's constantly just new lances being thrown out. A little bit more useful defensively. So I feel like for LGDN, that their composition lacks a bit of that AoE. Actually, Pycat's going Armlet, not going... Well, maybe going Armlet and Maelstrom, we'll see, but... Uh, because they lack AoE, I feel like there's a little more additional pressure than the, there would be in some cases. Gyrocopter, in theory, can dish it out, but he hasn't maxed Flat Cannon. He's only level 7. Brax just isn't getting the farm to deal with Illusions later on. Yeah, and, and I think that's the reason why the Spare Bear is actually going for the armlet. You know that slow sieging up a hill is going to be somewhat tough. I'll talk about that later as they're going to see perhaps pick up 1437. That's going to be the free call down going to be used. Disruption, a little bit too slow. But yeah, I mean, the bear is going to be in the front line that tanks a ton of damage. And you, it's going to take you a while to actually get these towers because of the lances and the rockets and all those spam. So your bear having the ability to actually regen is going to be pretty, pretty important. Um, but... Again, it's, the composition is going to be so tough. I, I feel like if LGN wants to, to win, they got to get these early towers, tier 2 towers, very, very quickly, get the armlet done, and, and start working on those towers, the tier 3 towers, because those ones are going to be surviving for a long time, I feel like. They're playing it well right now. What they're doing is basically spreading the map. We have PyCat Park top. 
and then they'll attract plus one park mid, usually G on the puck. And when you do it like that, Keeper of the Light can't defend every lane, and he is going to be your best tower defender. What we're talking about is more when they actually break the base. When they try to go high ground, it's going to be hard to really apply a lot of pressure to those tier threes without someone getting picked off. When you have a hero like Clockwork, you can just jump on you from across the map, from across the base. But for now, I think they're played it perfectly, and they're getting as much as they can out of these towers. CTY, interestingly enough, is going to join his team mid. He doesn't have his Diffusal Blade yet, just picked up the recipe. I feel much better suited just to be on the sidelines, but they just want to get some towers in there. There's your whole kid. Catches out G. Called out to fly, though. It's going to hit three heroes. Queen of Pain actually blinks past it. Drops the ult from behind. Only catches one. Not that great of an ultimate from SYDM to be, truth be told, Brax on the run. Clock takes a fall. I'm very surprised to see them forcing these fights, and they're going to lose more. They're going to lose three. Only for Lashrak. They don't even get the tier one. Tower defended. Diving a gyrocopter. Diving a puck. You, I don't know if they saw the gyro up mid lane. F FY, just get him out. G just blows his face off. Blasts him to oblivion. And now they've managed to give G his blink dagger. I don't want to be too harsh, but I really don't understand Vichy Gaming's decision making right now. Yeah, that looked a little bit questionable. I mean, again, high size 2020, they felt like they had a big enough lead. They didn't even finish any critical pushing item. It's not like they have a mech or anything. You can see that the uh, headdress is up on the keeper, but he's quite far away from that. Maybe they're feeling that the rotation was going to come from a little bit, uh, LG in, come from a little bit slowly, but it didn't. It came very, very quickly. And of course, the disruption is really the key spell that basically set up everything else because they keep diving on the hero that they first initiated on and they not only did not get the kill they lost four heroes on the mid lane a tier one tower on the mid lane that's well no tier one already went down tier one tower on the bot lane so that's a ton of go going the other direction and this go chart quickly reflects i mean hero composition be damned if you're going to be down by down by five six seven thousand of gold um meanwhile 1437 Finds San Diego in the jungle, oh, but he's got almost, almost gets the purge off. If he got that purge, I think that would have been a kill. Yeah, I mean, it's just their lineup is suited to slow roll. They're good at defending. Let the Phantom Lancer split push. Farm up your Diffusal Blade. And I think they are going to play more defensively now. But they went from basically being, I mean, just tower gold down. Or maybe, you know, one tower and a couple of kills down and a little bit of farm. To now being really far behind. CTY almost 2k gold behind. And... With Pycat going for this armlet Maelstrom build, he's going for the build. Well, also, we'll see if he completes the Maelstrom, but it looks like he's going for it. And it actually is coming out now. This is like the best items if you just want to start taking the tier 2s right now. Because your Assault Caress will be sooner. Your Bear gets the extra armor from the armlet to allow you to siege a little more effectively. And Vichy Gaby, they can kill the creeps, but they can't kill that Lone Druid Bear. So, at least not quickly. They don't have that much physical damage yet. So for Vichy Gaming, they cannot afford to give up kills on CTY. They cannot afford to force fights. They really want to react, maybe smoke bait, and just try and stall the game out. CTY doing a nice job. Push out that bottom oh lane. And meanwhile, top lane. Oh boy, that was a really close TP reaction by SYDM, yeah, but he will escape. Yeah, San Diego will take a rocket to the face as they're flying in. I like to see the supports or even uh, maybe uh, Clockwork pick up a Dowling Courage against that beard. The beard's going to be sitting in, in front. That's going to tank a lot of damage. And Regen, uh, the armor of Regen is pretty insane. FY just keep being ready. <laughs> He's going to toss the beard up on the hill, but what does that do? You should have tossed it back to the enemies for that stun, and he didn't. Gave up another free kill. Instantly recalled. Of course, the bear never takes damage from telekinesis. You have to auto attack it as well. So, uh, not recalled, but uh, returned, and then just immediately gets the kill. Now they're going for Roche, and with this Aegis, they're going to start looking at the tier twos. I think you get this Aegis, you knock down the last two. If you could get all three tier twos, great. Maybe you only get one or two at worst, and and then with the next Aegis, you'll look to break the base. We'll see exactly how quickly LGDM plays it. It will come down to Bobichi Gaming's decision making. Finally, CTY is going to have his Diffusal Blade. It's actually not that late considering he got aggressive tri lane, but it really could have been sooner if he had just been farming and not fighting with his team mid. They're going to smoke immediately after the Roche. LGDN, they actually give the Aegis to Misery. So, feeling the Pycat just doesn't need this. Yeah, I, I mean, hey, he's, he's so tank at this point, especially with the disruption, as well as that eventual mech, I believe. Um, is that finished? No, no mech just here. 1437 and Misery, somewhat so poor despite how much tower gold they have. Gone. And of course, Misery is going to do a ton of damage, especially the build that he's went for. He didn't split Earth, well, fairly spamble spells. And of course, I post Nova being level up right now. 
VG Gaming, just playing it defensively. They're building towards those next items. We're going to see the mech coming out on our Keeper of the Light. I imagine we'll see uh, a pipe eventually being worked on by the Clockwork. And now it just gets into, it gets into that siege mentality. You bunker down, you limit the damage, you try and find pickoffs where you can, but you don't force too many fights. G's the one with the Blink Tagger. That Puck is the one who can really create the opportunities for LGDN to go. And now we're seeing Brax build another crucial item. He's going for the BKBs. That's something they will need as G mid lane jumps in, then we'll port away with this orb. They are being forced to put three, four heroes beside Sweet CTY, which, I mean, is kind of necessary at this point. You at least need two or three. Uh, City of the mid lane. Maybe you could have one more top and one bottom. And SYDM, I think doing the smart thing as well. Just farming the jungle, pushing the lanes. You really want to try and counter what LGDN is doing by spreading the map. You don't want to be too defensive and let them starve you to death. Because that's the easy way for LGDN to try and take the slate. But Avicii Gaming, despite being down by about 6k gold, 8k experience. I think it's like the, the basically the smallest 6k gold, 8k experience lead you can ever have. Just because of the lineup. And we'll see if they can get the job done. They've had a good start, but they need to start looking towards tier twos in the next minute or so. Yeah, and, and to, to be honest, the fact that Phantom Lancer has max juxtapols and not max stopper walk is going to give LG Gaming the, the room to actually start slowly poking in because Phantom Lancer normally in this situation like these, he wants to split farm in the jungle and basically allow his four allies to defend. In fact, he can't do that right now because, well, double walk needs to be maxed. He really wants to spam it. Um, and the fact that now it's what in the 30 second cooldown on level one, it's not exactly very spammable. So in fact, Queen and Pain is kind of in his role, split pushing away because his bling is you know very low. You need mobility when you are playing like this. So it's somewhat tough for him to actually get the next item until he does level up. But where do you level up if you're not finding lots of peeps? So. We'll, He's kind of in this kind of awkward situation. We'll talk about it in a second. Illuminate being channel bottom. There is no pipe. There is no mech for LGD, but they still have enough creeps, it looks like, to bring down the tower because that first Illuminate from Fenrir missed. Had it hit, there would have been no creeps, but the bear still could have tanked. The thing is, can they go high ground right now? That'll be the real test. But with an armlet on the Melodra, I think they'll be able to do some chip damage and also giving the Aegis to Misery. Now it really makes more sense if you think about it because he could walk in, edict the tower, die, and come back and still com contribute to the team. Uh, Lashrak, probably actually their best tower killer, even better than the Lone Druid, albeit a lot squishier. So when you think about it that way, I think it's a fantastic decision to give him the Aegis. And it, it speaks to the urgency of the situation, even being up this much golden experience. They really want to do, I think, at least half damage to the tier 3 or bring down the last tier 2s with the Aegis. They will back off for the moment, but they got what they came for. They got that tier 2, they forced everyone back to the base, and now they'll go and farm the enemy jungle. Yep. Uh, we do see PL was able to split push draw a couple of TPs. Meanwhile, Brax is going to get his farm up as well. Brax's farm has not been too impressive this particular game. Got shut down pretty hard by the enemy trialing. Going to be going for Black King Bar, which personally I'm not a big fan of. Obviously, there's a lot of magical damage that you need to block. But I feel like he, he's not going to be in the front line. And you could definitely rely on Flat Cannon to basically give yourself a little bit more effective HP, if you will. I, I want to see a little bit more damage item on him. Um, but... He's going to go for the very, very safe build, and understandably so. Yeah, getting the BKB, I mean, considering the, all the other items they have on their team, if you wanted to take this late, your gyro needs to be really fat. But if you just want to break the base, then, I mean, this is a pretty safe way to do it. Maybe he doesn't need to be in the front lines, but if he gets caught by a clockwork hook, it means that clockwork won't be able to do a thing against him. So I think in that sense, it's not a bad pickup. They're grouped up five top. They're going to go for the second to last tier two. The Roshan Aegis still has about two minutes left, and they're going to start forcing the issue. And with the Armlet Maelstrom up, I think I saw Caress. Oh no, he's actually gone Vlad's. Really, really want to get all these towers and start breaking the base ASAP. Maximum armor, maximum just survivability on the bear. The Edict will bring the tower down. Now they look to rotate mid. Even the urn going to help keep them alive. CTY split pushing, but that clock is ticking for LGDN, so they will need to keep on knocking down these towers. I would say you want to get the tier 2 mid before this Aegis runs out, and then the next Aegis, that's where you look to break the base. Yep. I completely agree. Just uh, farm for four minutes when the Aegis is not available. Wait for Roshan and claim it fairly freely considering the fact that you have the dire advantage, you have the stronger hero right now. And PL can't definitely kind of run into Roshan Pit with his army of illusion and think he wouldn't fight like that. So uh, I, I think that's going to be LG's plan. Again, I want to see Vichy Gaming pick up a galley on the support because that beer right now is so tanky in, in armor. How much armor does he have right now? Plus 14? Man, and that's even before the assault, so you really need a way to shut him down. Well, he's already got Vlad, so we'll only get the one plus armor aura, but still, I mean, it's gonna it's a tanky bear. It's a very tanky bear, and killing it in a timely fashion is gonna be quite difficult. 
As Fenrir has got his mech, I mean, they're picking up some items of Ichi Gaming, but they're still getting outfarmed heavily. 10k gold lead, 10k experience lead. The big thing for LGD is they're, they're ahead right now, but if they lose a big fight, then suddenly Vici Gaming, they push out the lanes. Phantom Lancer probably gets close to his Reaver, to his Heart of Tarras. CTY starts getting that next big item, and that's where the game will really turn. That's why where we say, well, Vici Gaming is actually not out of it, even though they're really far behind, is a reasonable thing to say, is they're going to rotate bottom, they're going to look to push the base, and CTY looking towards the tier 1 top. G is here, ultimate or picked up. Looking for a Scythe of Ice, an item that could be big for them if they want to just get that pick off and then breach the high ground. Here they go. TP's coming in top. Yeah, actually a lot of other Chinese Phantom Lancer in this case will... Let's see if it's going to get ganked first. Meanwhile, it looks at like purple and a little bit of issue as well. He, he could easily blink away, but not before you get waning rift like that. It's oh, going no. to blow the ultimate. You do rift. That's going to hit again. Misery just landing these beautiful splurs being set up by his allies. Perfect play. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that a lot of other Chinese PL at this point would have just picked up a Vit Booster, upgraded his Infusal Blade to Tier 2, and then, you know, and then go for the eventual heart. Uh, seems like he might be having other things in mind, though. Maybe even gonna be very greedy and pick up the Reaver first for the ultimate extra HP on Phantom Lancer. Either that or just saving for buyback, and if he wins a the fight, then he'll get it. We will see, as the Aegis of the Immortal has worn off at this point, but they're still gonna take the Tier 2. I really don't think they'll go for high ground yet. They're gonna back off. They'll wait for that that next Roshan, and then they're going to do it. That's going to be the big timing. They'll have the BKB on the Gyro. It's already up. They may have the Hyperstone on the Lone Druid Bear at the least. In fact, that is up. So we could see him uh, could see him go for the Assault Caress. The Midas Armor R is still going to be very helpful against the buildings. Uh, or maybe he'll just get the, the Mjolnir. But either way, they should have just about every tool that they need to, to force the fight. And if they execute well, to win. But the thing is, against Vici Gaming's lineup... Making a mistake in execution. Uh, well, they don't have pipe, they don't have mech. Uh, or they do have mech, but not pipe. I still think it's okay, because they have the BKB on the gyro. Illuminate spam doesn't really hurt the Lone Druid Bear that much, because it's got so much HP. And, and regen. Yeah, and, and decent regen. And you probably give the Aegis to Lashrak, so he won't really care about being spammed down. So I think in, not having a pipe in this game isn't the worst thing in the world. And they should have a decent shot at breaking the base, but we can't count it as a certainty by any means. Yeah, I mean, the pipe is going to be helpful in terms of protecting your creep wave for that, from that Illuminate, but uh, it's not absolutely necessary. I think what Vichy Gaming might look to do right now is do a fairly aggressive smoke gank. They do have decent burst damage coming from the Queen of Pain Clockwork, and they can even pull the uh, PL in uh, if they find a, a kind of an isolated hero. Because if you do get the successful smoke gank off, then you get the Aegis as well, which is kind of a big thing. I don't think LGN has what it takes to break high ground without the Aegis. Yeah, I, like you said, if you could just find that fight right before Roshan respawns, even if you don't steal it, at least you delay them from getting it. You push out the lanes, you force them to push them back in, then they go, at which point it's a couple more minutes in, maybe C2I is his heart, and then life will get a lot harder for you. G, bottom lane, feeling very confident. He could be solo killed by this Phantom Lancer, unless he just TPs all the way back to base, and well, he'll be okay. In the end, it's C2I who backs off, playing quite a bit in the dark. Yeah, in fact, he's got... That's the one thing for Vichy Gaming. They don't have much vision, so if they want to go for that smoke gank, they're doing it blind, and that's incredibly dangerous. And if they lose a fight and give the Aegis away, that's probably game. So something they could look to do, but given their lack of vision, something I doubt we're going to see. So Phantom Lancer goes for Yasha, which is something that we see more often in a European style of Phantom Lancer. How do you feel about this item comparing to, let's say, upgraded Diffusal Blade 2 for a lot of added damage on your lance as well as your illusions? And then getting a Vitality Booster or going for the eventual heart versus seems like a little bit more kind of an immediate impact with the Mantis style. Yeah, I mean, Mantis is going to be. It's, it's really the better split pushing item, obviously, as your illusions get the attack speed, they get the move speed, so you can split push faster, you can farm faster. It will be okay in the team fights because he can remove the puck silence, he can remove entangle. So it's not that I think it's a bad item, but just in terms of keeping the Phantom Lancer in the fight, if he, if he honestly gets entangled, I feel like he's probably dead anyway. I mean, they have a gem on the Shadow Demon, if he's alive, they're going to have vision of him, and there's always a Demonic Purge, there's the Dream Coil as well. So I don't know if a Manta will really help his survivability, and I don't think he's going to be able to split push quickly enough to stop LGDN from 5-manning, just because, well, he's very worried about this puck around the, all around the map. G's about to have a Scythe device. So while I can understand why he would get it, I feel like he should go straight heart. Now, I don't think upgrading for a Manta is going to be that worthwhile, but the, the Yasha by itself, a good DPS item, one of the better ones on Phantom Lancer. I mean, really only topped by the upgraded Defusal. So uh, I would not like to see him upgrade it, but we'll see what he goes for. Yep. 
Yeah, upgrading Diffuse normally is good. It might not be so good in this game because there's nothing really to burn from that bear, which is going to be, you know, standing on the front line. So, yeah. He he has chosen to upgrade it. So we'll see. It could be useful. I mean, if it, let's say he removes a, an entangle at the right moment, he removes that silence. Maybe that changes the course of the fight. But uh, there's also the strong possibility if he gets caught, he's dead anyway. So they get Roche, and here comes the time. This is the big fight. If if Ichi Gaming can hold even once. I think they have a very strong chance of taking this game, but if they lose this first fight, it probably will snowball the other way from there. So this most likely will be the deciding fight coming up now. Well, Puck picks up the Aegis instead of the uh, Le Shrek, so that's gonna... Well, when you know Puck, uh, especially being handled by G, has the Aegis, he's gonna play so aggressive. He has also the Siphon Vice, so you look towards him to actually blink in and basically focus either on the Caudal or on the Rubik. Because they're basically going to be free kills. But if he does find himself a PL, well, that's a, kind of the bigger price. Now that they've taken Russia and Lumi, it's all about buybacks for Vici Gaming. Um, aside from maybe the Phantom Lancer who perhaps wants to just go straight for the upgraded Diffusal since he can buy it soon. Everybody else really wants that buyback. Keep of the Light the most important here, I would say. Queen of Pain and Clockwork not that far behind. They have to use those buybacks wisely. And the key thing is, they if someone dies, they just want to back off and make sure the rest of the team is alive while that person buys back quickly. They are they are fairly low level. Keep of the Light's only 10. They should have the Glyph online at this point. They can probably hold with one wave of buybacks. But if they just give up 3-4 kills trying to save that one hero who gets caught, then they probably lose 1-2 lanes of racks, and that might be game. And here comes the push. Well, Armlet is going to be doing a lot of work against the region. You can see the XTT getting position to drop those cogs. Cogs going to be annoying, but not if Puck blinks in right now. He does. It gets flipped up in the air as well. Now, he does have the Aegis. Stream is going to get dropped onto. Calldown comes down, but the tower taking a ton of damage. He's buying a lot of time for his allies. She's going to make out alive. No, he does not. The Aegis is going to have to be used right now. He does. No, he fades through it. Flings back out. BKB gets popped, and the bear is just mauling down this Rax. There's no glyph. They're going to lose the melee Rax. It's too easy. For LG in. They actually had the glyph. They popped it earlier, but G just stalled forever and a day. Clockwork had a great hook. Didn't have the cogs online to follow up. They get one lane of racks. They muscle through a well-executed siege by LGD. And if you recall that match versus IG, remember how they dove the fountain. They chased for kills. They didn't do that this time. They just focused on the racks. They didn't overcommit. They did what they needed to do to take one lane of racks, and now they're looking at multiple lanes of racks. It'll be two to fall here. They probably can even take this fight. Scythe with CTY. CTY is dead. No buyback for him. They may just go for the throne right now. If they want the Mega Creeps, they can have that too. But with no Phantom Lancer, this is going to be hard for LGDN, no matter how you look at it. And oh, they have the Assault Caress on the Lone Druid as well. So another fantastic item to force the fights. But I love the fact that LGDN showed discipline in that fight, not doing what they did in G League, which was chasing for kills. And well, here's the long range hook, but I don't see this amounting too much. Yeah, and of course the bear is going to basically ignore and start working on the racks itself. Using the bear actually chase away Finrar for a little bit. That's three lanes of racks on one clean push. I mean, again, discipline is a very good way to describe it. Also, you want to remember that PL, you can't actually do anything at this push. PL is a, a hero that really relies on his illusion to basically split push and kind of beat you, never fighting you directly head to head. P when, when you're getting your base racks like this, you have to fight head-to-head, -head, and PL is generally not the carry that's going to bail you out of that situation. It looks like one of the exciting new teams from China is going to be going home here. Vici Gaming, they're down Mega Creeps, they're down 20k gold, and LGDN just not even wanting to think about a throw here. Vici Gaming will tap out. CTY is done. Vici Gaming are done. We won't be seeing that Mask of, Mass Shadow Fiend, Mask of Madness Shadow Fiend in the next round, unfortunately. LGDN... They will advance, and well, a well-deserved win. The fan favorites from the Western Hemisphere, of course, playing in China now, will be moving on. And I gotta say, they played fantastically today, and I also feel like Vici Gaming, we've seen better from them. And having the, the good start they had this game, I felt like they really had a strong shot, but some crucial misplays, and then some great reactions from Misery. For me, Misery is the player who really turned this game around for LGDN. Yeah, Misery, as early game play was absolutely spectacular. Had a little bit early tough times in the trial lane, but the trial lane never really went anywhere. And of course, you talked about those sol solo kills that Vichy Gaming gave away, whether it's on the support FY or uh, CTY getting you know solo pickoff. Well, those kills didn't help. I think CTY and his team need to show a little bit more discipline. 
uh, especially throughout the mid game to really win it. But right now, LGDN will be moving on in the G1 League qualifiers. Yeah, it looks like Vici Gaming is just going to continue messing around a little bit. 1437 as well. I imagine the team sort of celebrating, having some fun at this point. They'll move on to phase three. We have one more match coming up. It will be a few hours later today. I think this was our fastest series of the tournament. And we're looking at, is it a three hour break, Lumi? I think it's a three hour break. It is a three hour break, yes. So we'll have time for probably two VODs, guys. We'll, we'll try to play two fun VODs for you over the break. Maybe some classic games from last season's G1 event. Hopefully Dota TV will be working next time. I do apologize for those who it wasn't. Uh, this game, well, I'm going to blame Lumi. I'm going to blame the Russians because the Russians joining my channel. And uh, Lumi in the wrong one. Just kidding, Lumi. It's not your fault. But uh, yeah, we do apologize for those issues. Should be fine for the next series. We'll make extra sure that we have everything sorted out. As uh, Well, they weren't here this time. But more importantly, congratulations, of course, to LGDN, who will be moving on. They'll be in Phase 3. They will be one of your final eight teams. But they're not there yet. They have to win through Phase 3 to get to the Land Finals. And that's really the big dance. That's where everyone will get excited. It's not enough to be in March Madness. You want to go to the Final Four. We'll find out if they can be in that Final Four later on. But for now, Vici Gaming, they go home. And later today, Lumi, we'll come back with Zenith versus Neelush in Thailand. Any closing words? Anything you want to add? Nothing for now. I'm looking forward to the other best of three as well, which is going to come up in about three hours. All right, guys. Stay tuned in three hours. Zenith versus Neil Ocean Thailand. I'm LD. He's Luminous. We are Beyond the Summit. If you enjoy casting, be sure to follow us. Twitter.com, Facebook.com, slash Luminous Inverse. And for me, it's the same except slash LD Dota. Thank you all for tuning in. Enjoy the break. Relax. Stay here if you want to watch some fun VODs. And then come back in about three hours' time if you don't. We will be live with our sec second and final best of three for Phase 2. It's almost time to move into Phase 3. It's almost time for the big dance. We'll be there after this.